Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, not long ago, the uh, Defense Science Board uh, put out a report that said our grid system, our national grid system, is fragile, vulnerable, and near its capacity. And as a result of that, or perhaps influenced by that, DOD has been expressing more and more of an interest in, in uh, using small nuclear reactors, so much like uh, maybe Barton was talking about, the, these micro uh, reactors uh, on plant or on, on bases so that they could be islands of, of independence from the grid. Um, kind of fascinating concept with that. Do you, do either of you agree with the Defense Science Board, with their conclusion? Because we've been having quite a few hearings about this grid reliability, about reliability and resilience. Do you agree with their, their findings that there are problems with, the, uh, with reliability and resilience? I agree that resiliency is a huge issue and it is only going to get more challenging if we don't get new um, base load plants coming in, including nuclear. I would also say there's still no other energy source on the planet that compares to the attributes of nuclear power. Clean, base load, no refueling for at least 18 months. The new SMRs coming in, they could possibly go four years or longer. With regards to resiliency and micro reactors and the 2016 uh, Defense um, Science Board, um, we think it certainly, well, we see that it is driving the Department of Defense in evaluating their options with micro reactors now for that very purpose of resilience. Okay, if I, if, Obviously, resiliency. If, if I could on that, the, uh, the I might disagree slightly with you on that, and that is your own department, where, excuse me, with DOE has, has come out with his own report saying that actually for to improve reliability and resilience, it's, it's uh, nuclear and coal because of the storage capabilities of on-site storage and the lack of, of interruption of supply. So uh, I'll just conclude. You're, you're saying you're, you, have, you share that concern. Uh, oh, so yes, indeed. That, and let me go to the next issue that is a little bit more sensitive to this. Um, that Because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated with the nuclear industry. We don't have any plants in West Virginia, but we did have shipping port that was not, uh, not very far from uh, where I live and in my district. But the, um, um, not long ago, it was just last October, the Hill came out with a report uh, that talked about the, um, uh, how Russia's Putin was trying to influence and get involved and, and take more influence, control over our atomic energy business in the United States. And he was using, uh, according to the article, uh, there was litigation over bribery kickbacks, extortion, and money laundering, all that took place in and around the sale of Uranium One, and how we, how Cepheus apparently dropped the ball uh, and allowed us to lose a lot of control of our uranium. So with this issue of nuclear energy as much, how do we, how do we restore the confidence that we're not we're not allowing a foreign entity like Russia to influence our nuclear energy field. Given the, the history there, and I, I'm curious, what's taken place internally to, to reverse the damage that was done under the previous administration as a result of this? I would say, first of all, it's very important to have a diversity of supply. In the United States, there's about 5% of the uranium that comes from U.S. uranium mining uh, miners. Um, that is an historic low um, for enrichment, um, apart from um, LES, again, which we re appreciate for an enricher in the United States. But the fact is we have zero American-owned enrichers. Um, with regards to supply, um, between 17 and 20 percent of all the enrichment that comes into our nation's 99 reactors comes from Russia. Um, there's a suspension agreement that limits them to go that where they cannot supply more than 20 percent. Um, that su su suspension agreement is slated to end in 2020. The Department of Commerce is following that very closely. I can't speak to the details what you said, but I can say that it's very important for us to have a balanced um, and diverse supply 
um, including um, strong um, supply capability for the front end, as was mentioned, for fuel supply in this country. You're just given that my time's expired, I think, so I'm just going to ask you if you could please, could you stop by my office? I'd like to have more of a conversation about this, of uh, how we, what are the next steps that need to be done? Thank you, and I yield back. Please, sir.